Enzo Palmieri, and this time we will briefly speak about seamless cavities, and in particular about seamless tube forming. I think that most of you already know the spinning process developed at INFN LNL that is an interesting alternative among all seamless technologies. The cavity is straightforwardly spun from a circular blank by a cold forming process and no intermediate annealing is required. The actual procedure for prototype spinning is a fabrication rate of the order of one resonator per day, but it can be increased to several times that rate when uh, automatic machines uh, will be used. 40 megavolt per meter has been reached in monocells and RF tests are in progress uh, at the moment on uh, three cell cavities. Moreover, it has also been demonstrated that spinning perfectly combines with other technologies such as the sputtering of niobium onto copper and the niobium clay copper. However, disposing of seamless niobium or uh, copper tubes is mandatory for spinning seamless multicell cavities. I anticipated you that the process for forming seamless tubes in which I am currently interested in, just in this moment, is the cold backward extrusion that you already saw in a previous video. This technique, even if it uses expensive tooling, could actually result in cost savings. Why? Oh, because the shit rolling steps are skipped. Nevertheless, I want to present you some other techniques I investigated already some years ago for obtaining a seamless niobium or copper tubes. Let's start with flow turning. So, a short and thick cup must be formed by a thick flat disc by spinning or deep drawing at your choice if you want. Then the whole thickness of the cup is reduced and the tube elongated by spinning on a multi spindle machine, in our case just three rollers. By such a technique, reductions in wall thickness of 90% and increases in length up to 1000% are achievable without any intermediate annealing. Remind please. Tube flow turning is particularly cost effective for the production of precision tubes, both for the process simplicity and because of uh, almost no worth. We can say without doubt that flow turning asks for uh, a relatively low power consumption, a short forming time, the possibility of cold working as well as the simple tool design, and uh, an extended tool life. All these together make certainly this process an interesting seamless tube forming technique. The disadvantage, however, is that you need a preliminary process of spinning or deep drawing for getting out the perform, and this is costly. You can use two different techniques for tube flow turning, namely backward and forward forming. What's the difference? In forward flow turning, the plastically deformed material flows in the same way of the roller feed direction, while uh, in backward flow turning is just the opposite. By the method you are seeing, we can rely on a really close control of the tolerances, since the metal formed under the roller will uh, never move again, remaining firmly stuck onto the mandrel. Moreover, any variation caused by the variable wall thickness of the perform is continually pushed ahead of the rollers and eventually trimmed off at the end. Now let's pass to see the seamless tube forming by deep drawing. What's the advantage of deep drawing? It is an incredibly cheap forming process since it is one of the most common sheet metal forming operations. Deep drawing gives poorer tolerances when compared with flow turning but it is preferable for mass production because of the low costs and the reduced manufacturing time. And at last, for spinning cavities, we don't need an exaggerated tolerances of the wall thickness. Indeed, the spinning is not hydroforming. If there is any thickness in homogeneity, this will be needed all together during the spinning step when passing from the tube to the cavity. Deep 
drawing is a process in which the central portion of a flat blank is forced by means of a punch into a die opening to form a tubular part in which the thickness is substantially the same as that of the original material. During the first stage of the deep drawing process, the various volume elements of the blank decrease correspondingly in circumferential length until they reach the die opening. Then they bend to conform to the die radius. The punch force is transferred from the part bottom into the wall of the part, which is thus subject to axial tension stresses. Three redrawing passages. In our experience, deep drawing can give tubes within thickness tolerances of the order of 200 microns and with excellent formability. The only drawback expected in direct deep drawing is the high roughness of the tube internal surface. However, if you really want, you can easily get rid of it by reworking the tube or steel mantle by flow turning. Reversal deep drawing has instead the enormous advantage to give an internal surface with a submicrometric roughness. How do we start? Just as for direct deep drawing. Indeed, the first operation in reverse deep drawing is the same as in direct deep drawing process. The difference lays in the rewarding steps. The punch pushes the tube from the bottom with the difference that is, it is plugged externally to the tube rather than internally. Please, look to the second picture. Therefore, after each redrawing, what was the external surface of the tube becomes the internal surface and vice versa. So, do you want to get deeper in film films, new cavity fabrication techniques? Please, come to the workshop, October 4 to 6, Legnaro National Laboratories. See you. Bye bye. Ciao.